Hey folks, glad you joined me out here at the woods today. Gonna be working on a Roycroft pack frame off and on throughout the day. I gotta go find some down limbs or whatever I can scrounge up to build one with. I don't know that I'm gonna put any straps on it. I've got some paracord with me, but I think I'm gonna go with a different route. I just want the basic frame to start with. So stay with me and I got some food that I'm getting ready to cook here. I got it on the fire actually, but letting the fire burn down just a little bit, heating me up some water. So we're just going to take it nice and easy through the whole day and see what we can get accomplished. Well, folks, there's lunch, a cup of coffee and some rotini noodles and chicken. Not bad. I write in my journal sometimes so I can remember stuff that I did or where I've been or what I was doing on a certain time, what the weather was like. Usually I record that. Uh, today I recorded that I'd been out looking for mushrooms. It's the middle of May and that I'd made some lunch and what the weather was like and what my plans were for the day. And that's probably all I'll write down for the entry for the day. It's just a simple book that I just keep track of things that I do and if there's something that I need to record that I've done or <clears throat> noticed or something like that, then I'll go ahead and put it in there. And it just stands for a record for myself for, that I can look back on in previous trips. So that's what I was doing. Finished up my lunch. Now I'm gonna finish up some coffee. Mm. That lunch hit the spot. That was really simple what they call Bear Creek Foods. I think I got it at uh, a Menard store, which Menards aren't everywhere, but it's a big, giant, big box hardware store. And it comes in a big bag. It's like four servings, but I only pulled out like a serving and a half. And you just add water to it, boil it up a little bit, and then I took a can of white chicken breast and put about a half a can. Well, it was a small can, so I put about a half can in that didn't look like it was enough so I dumped the rest of it in there and it was probably a little heavy on the chicken side it probably would have actually fed two people for a good lunch a trail lunch I didn't actually eat it all I threw some of it out but I figure the coons need to eat too so now I'm gonna get ready to go out and scout and see if I can find me a few sticks for my Roy Croft pack frame uh, I probably won't take you with me because selecting them and cutting them is pretty non-exciting I'll show you what I come up with when I get done and bring it back to camp. Well folks, I'm back from selecting some pieces of wood. I just poured myself a cup of coffee here. So we'll give that a little stir. This is my chopping block. Move that out of the way for a minute. My version of Roycroft is something that has a fork already in it, and then you just have to put your crossbar on. And I try to find a crossbar that's bent just a little bit so that it's got a little bit of a curvature to your back, something like that. I'll probably put it on the back side though, like this, and notch it in. But I got to looking at this one, and when you look at it, one of the pieces goes out this way, and one of the pieces is more straight. So I decided not to use that one. That's why I cut a couple. And this one is really just about as bad when you start looking at it. But if you come across right in here, it's not near as bad. It still has a little bit of a curvature, which that's okay kind of curves to your shoulder a little bit this one doesn't but I think that once I cut it down and get it to where I want it and spread it open 
because I can use this stick and I can spread this thing out just a little bit, put it under tension, and it'll make a super good frame. This is cherry wood here, this fork, and I'm gonna trim it down, and then I cut a piece of, just a piece of cherry for a crossbar if I want it. And it, you can see it's got a little bit of a curve in it. I still need to trim it up, but not much. But I'm gonna take all the bark off of these and get them down to where I think they'll be more serviceable. Okay, that's kind of what we came up with. This I'll probably saw with the saw, I think. But I'm gonna leave a little bit of a knob up here because if I wanna put a loop on just a pack just to hang something off of it, then I've still got this to catch it with. There we go. Now I can work on cleaning this up a little bit. Some of these knots knocked off of there. the old Jeff White knife out. Can't beat it. I am going to trim this up just a little bit. times past I've made these all with just a knife. Now I have a saw here, but I've done this for reenacting a couple of times and built these all just straight with a knife. I actually drilled the holes with an awl for strapping so that I could have strapping through the wood instead of around it. Yeah, I've been quite elaborate at times, but this is going to be a down and dirty quick deal. So. That's pretty much to my liking. It's got a little bit of a curve in it. Now we've got to kind of make up an idea here of where we're going to put this at. Notice that when I split that out of there with the knife, I'm starting at this side because if you start over here, you take a chance of splitting this off. And I didn't want to split any more of that off than I had to. I'm trying to salvage some of it. Let's 
So, what we want to do is when you get that kind of where you want it, now I'm going to spread this like this. So I've got a little bit more in there. So I'm going to find me a piece of wood and I'm going to drive it in. Probably something I just cut off of that. Just to spread it out a little bit. I don't want to spread it till it cracks, but I just want to spread it open enough to where I know it's going to be under tension when I lash it all together and notch it the rest of the way. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little notch on the back of this that's going to catch right here and right here. So you want to make sure that when you do these notches that you get them pretty level across from each other and you want them square. It was like I can see this one here, I didn't get it very square. When you notch that out and you spread this, basically all that pressure on this stick is going to be right here on this notch and the notch that you put in the stick. Lay this right here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my piece to spread it open with. That's just a piece I cut off the end of it. So, let's see what we get here. Alright, so I got it spread open where I kind of want it. I'm going to get my pencil out of my journal here to use as a marking tool. Like I said, you want to kind of be gentle with this at first. You don't want that thing popping out of there. But get this about centered up where you want it. It's got the little dip in the back of it. And I'm going to come along here and I'm just going to make a mark right at the edge of that notch I already put in the Y. Same thing over here. You don't want these to you don't want any of it to move while you're doing it. Now you can see that that mark I got right there and right there. That's how much of an angle that is when it's sitting down in there. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to baton this just a little bit with my knife to get it going square down. Now I always tell you I'm not a big fan of batoning, but this is one case where doing a good square cross cut is going to save you a lot of heartache from having issues where that catches on there. And you can see I'm not hitting this real hard. And I don't want to go real deep. I just want that first initial cut to be square. You're not going to have to go real deep with it just like that. Same way on this other side. See how that's nice and square? That's hopefully what's going to save us from having a lot of grief here when we start lashing this together. <clears throat> and I may not made these quite wide enough, but I'm going to lash one in because I kind of figure I can get it to catch. fitting like it's supposed to and you can see I've got a little bit of notch play not much quite a little bit there but that's all right when I wrap it and then this one here see we had it spread that far but I'm gonna lash this one first before I spread this one and lock it in and lash it and I'll have everything ready so bear with me I gotta find some bank line. all right now what I'm using here is braided bank line you got twisted bank line you got braided bank line it's all made by the same place but that's a braid instead of a twist so it doesn't unravel you can actually melt the end on it and you can twist it as much as you want and it will not separate a little different beast it's not really multi-purpose like regular bank line is where you can unravel it and do some stitching like I did my tent repair video. But I like this just for the simple fact that it won't unravel. So I'm going to spiel off a little bit here. I'm 
that's the nice thing about this bank line is it will grab regardless of whether it's twisted or not you see I left a little tag in but I got a place to tie it off to and there we are there's one okay there's the version of my Rycroft pack frame simple Y stick cross piece got a little bit of a bend to it a couple of simple notches some simple lashings there you go it's nothing big I know I'm a pretty big guy but you know pretty basic simple stuff fits on there it's gonna ride about like that right there when you get the straps on it basic simple easy to make a couple of simple half lap notches is what I call them and some basic lashing you're good to go you could throw some paracord on this make a couple straps bring them down just tie a loop here and a loop here bring it around around your shoulder tie it off crossways this way wherever you want it for length like this and then you've got plenty of room to lash everything to your stick to your pack frame you got this if you want to put a loop on your pack whatever hang it off there you're like not going to be carrying a huge load on this you know probably the maximum that this is made for just comfort sake the way that the straps and everything are going to be i would say no more than about 20 25 pounds could you haul more on it i'm sure you could would i want to not for very far but anyways just wanted to share that with you this is my roy croft pack frame i appreciate everybody watching my videos give me a like give me a share and I'll be back with another one pretty soon. Thank you.